kind of whatever. Nah, that's cool, man. That's why I like bugging you, man. No, yeah, definitely. Please ask. I might throw some questions at your way. Like, I'm pretty sure I got your contact info for your cell phone at the very yeah, least. Yeah, I, I think you got my cell phone number. Yeah. So I uh, might have, hey, hey. Yeah, seriously. Go Wait, for it, man. Can confirm this so I can tell some guy to go fuck off. <laughs> I put my headphones on and he's still saying fuck off. Hi, guys. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Fuck off, Jeff. Uh, fine. <laughs> How's it going? Not bad, not bad. So, oh, kids are coming up to me at work going, have you seen the new clone? The Clone Wars is restarting, the cartoon, and they're talking about Mandarin. Oh, shit. And getting so hyped for more Star Wars. Mandarin's coming in. Mandalorian? So, oh, Mandalorian, yeah. Bought a new Mandarin. Over, <laughs> bought a new overlay. <laughs> bought a new overlay. I want you guys to go, take the link and go to Twitch and check it out. Uh, the, the link is broken, Jeff. Oh, sorry. One second. <laughs> Wait, it wants my credit information. What's going on? I forget one little there we go. Try that. Um this particular overlay, like the Celtic wheel animated, comes in four colors. So I got like a four for one deal for the same sixty odd bucks Canadian on sale from eighty. Um, so I'm going to use one for Star Wars, one for Mummy's Mask, one for, you know, anyway, this is a turquoise. There's a blue, there's a yellow, there's a red, plus there's the brave. So now we have six overlays, one for every show. Um, and this color, this turquoise resembles that pale blue holographic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so um, I'm going to, I'm going to start us up here and get real good to go. Yeah, you are broadcasting your voice already through Twitch. So, mm-hmm. I'm excited about it. <laughs> uh, hearing your voice twice over is really fucking annoying. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought once was bad. Hi, Jay. <laughs> hello everyone and we are live here at twitch.tv the gm's cut and we're excited we're excited more star wars is coming your way the mandalorian tv series is coming out guys a new movie Ooh. is coming out winner the clone wars is going to do another season and you can tell by all so our your, bantering uh, and, and your you chat's know. not spotlighting in the uh in the stream yeah no i'm I was trying to stall while working Ooh, on technical, sorry. but th thank you for pointing out the, the next technical flaw. Sorry. That's okay. So you talk now. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> the Mandalorian's coming out. The, the new uh, season of Clone Wars is getting the, uh, the boot. And, uh, you know, there's uh, other Star Wars in the making. But uh, from what I have been told, sources say that they are actually disney's actually talking about toning back after the not as stellar performance of uh the last episode of the what is it sestopology or whatever it's yeah. <laughs> i guess it's going to nine films now right total yeah. total whatever that is ah my face is moving in random directions. I don't understand what you're saying. There's no bad Star Wars. All Star Wars is good Star Wars, as far as I'm concerned. But anyways, um, so they they are, they did have plans to do a um, side movie for Boba Fett. And I think because they actually did get uh, – I'm not 100% sure if they've canceled it or not. That was one I think they were on the fence about. But I'm thinking with The Mandalorian coming out – I think they're going to gauge the popularity of that show's uh, public response to as to whether or not they go forward with the Boba Fett movie. I think it will be like the Obi-Wan series instead of a movie. Oh, I think they're still giving him a movie. 
it's they're they're doing series so that's the the latest i have really heard. yes wow mm. i'm actually i'm pretty big on that myself yes. i prefer series to movies because i find that they get the chance like if they had done if peter jackson had done lord of the rings like they did game of thrones took you know like how many more hours would they have had to tell that story and and actually been able to do it right i don't know that's that's my two cents no no tell us how you really feel four degrees celsius eh no, about, about, about star warsy things we are oh. still streaming <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. oh, here it's about check, check. 35 so. so how awesome is our snazzy new overlay you guys like this i, I like this, it it's fancy that's good this, yeah, this, this is bad. this is your patreon money at work um and i've got several different colors for you know other shows kind of thing uh yeah i'm uh i'm liking this a lot but uh when uh are we ready to go when last we left our heroes Epic crawl. No, no, it's good. You're, you, you do know the last the last time you broke into song. Yeah, I, I, you're all of season two. I don't know if you are aware of this, Matt, but like I've got you, like all of season two. Your little intro of you know ba 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 ba, and then we get into the the homebrew music. So, welcome to our live stream of our Donna Defiance campaign podcast. We have been podcast. This was our first, our fr no, our second. We tried Mommy's Mask and it's a bit of a side project now. We picked up, put it down for like a year, but when we finally released positive content on a weekly basis in April, a couple years ago, Rogue One had just come out. Star Wars was the thing. We went with Saga Edition instead of the FFG rule set because we wanted to do the Donna Defiance campaign that happens three months after Order 66. These guys wanted to birth the rebellion and the running around doing Senator Bail Organa's wet work. And we are in season two. We're in book two out of 10 books. They're short adventures. So it really only counts like five modules, but 10 books, pretty short season two. We're in wretched hive. You guys are like more than halfway through it. And we're going from the podcast aspect, which we are still putting up our podcast everywhere, speaker, SoundCloud, Spotify, you name it, we're on it to dabbling with video. And we started off with doing some battle maps and doing some layovers and doing some gallery shots. And now looking at this, we've come a long way. We've got our Roll20 interface. We've got a separated dice roller. We got our DiceWise Entertainment logo. We have our Star Wars We Shot First Season 2 artwork commissioned and colored in. We have a couple of the core books so people know the rule set. I'm actually projecting the core book and the Rebellion Era so people know it says right on the thing. Normally where we'd say DLC for fantasy grounds or whatever. We got everything. So at a glance, I'm hoping that people are going to go, I know what that is before they just turn it off, you know, because they hate it when they look at something, they go, I don't know what this is. And they go away. Now they'll know before they turn over to SpongeBob or something. And, you know, that makes me happy. So when last we left our heroes, we were, some of us were on a ship and some of us were in the atrium so let's start with the ship merrick haas dr leth and old man's in who's like i am too old and tired for this tie him up shoot him and he just goes back to his bunk and that's frank for the evening what do you guys do we had a guy a corn assassin bleeding out we had Merrick and Haas, you know, ready to put the boots to him or worse. And we have poor, poor Arthur in pieces because we're paranoid that um, something might have, you know, infected him. <coughs> His virus. What, what do you guys do? What are you doing at this point? I believe we had dealt with the corn invader that managed to survive after poisoning himself and was like taking him to the medical bay. Mm hmm. So you tried to like save him? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, we moved him over to the medical bay. Uh, I think we were going to probably eventually try to figure out why he was here. 
he's also currently very much unconscious. So, okay. Uh, may I pull your attention to the slamming new uh, jetpack wearing Merrick Mini that I got going? And we have Haas. Joe gets his very own Mini for once. Oh, Huzzah. yay. <laughs> Huzzah. Uh, I've got you on a gray pad. What, uh, what color are your dice there, Joe? Pink? Okay. Uh, so. Yeah. Or, yeah, whatever. Oh, oh you can okay. change them. Yeah. No, that's fine. You can, you can be mauve. No, because remember, I wasn't allowed to use green. I wasn't allowed to use black. I wasn't That's my to... color. Get away from green. <laughs> See? Because <laughs> we can't have another Joe with green dice. No, no, no. <laughs> Fiercely yep. protective of, of our dice colors. <laughs> yeah. Well, for the interface, because you guys have your names um, stated up here, and then it actually shows the miniatures versus the, um, um, you know, like what we got going on. We're trying to uh, trying to show. There we go. Just bring this up just enough, just enough, so you guys can see everyone's name, character, who's playing them, and and what's going on here downtown at the uh, in the world of dice colors. So that the color that's beside their name, ladies and gentlemen, is the color of the dice they roll. And there is like a little base that their mini standing on. So you can easily identify who's what, who's where, who's standing on what, you know, and we try how to give dead we are and how dead we are. Yeah. Not looking so healthy there, Merrick, hey, but you look, you I'm look not even good. wearing pants. Let's remember this. Zo zoom in. <laughs> you just got the helmet. No, the no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dope looking mini. There you go, buddy. Hey, Your, no, years mini, of happy Star mini, Wars play. The mini is sweet. He's got no pants on. <laughs> wow, dude, Sasha's huge. That's not <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> no, I, it's the turbulence from the jet that I'm worried about the flipping and the flopping. Uh huh. Well, it didn't take long to, to degenerate into our usual. So, uh, Doc, <laughs> Doctor Leth, you know, poor Jay's been waiting two hours for our li other live stream to finish. So, Aiden and uh, Jay are in the house tonight. Jay, all the way from Japan, rocking the Chroma Cam. I love how that pops up. <laughs> it's the free just, software. Just gotta remind you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Doctor Leth, we haven't done much with you in a while. You know, you can try and save this patient. What's what's going on here in the medical bay? Would you like to reassemble your, your favorite nurse? Rahal's kind of busy elsewhere. Oh, I certainly could. He seems pretty stable for now and will presumably be out for a while. Okay. What about your other uh, patient that's outside shooting up and flapping in the wind there? <clears throat> Might be a good idea. Oh, I'm sure he'll collapse bed. eventually. <laughs> Just He'll tire himself out and have a nap. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. I love how some jokes carry over from one to the other. Okay. So I suppose, yes, I would uh, go back to work. Once I've got the new patient settled and strapped in, I would work on rebuilding Arthur. All right. Peace um, by peace. Now, uh, I believe we did the roles for you stabilizing and life sciencing the guy last game did we not yes we did yeah so um yeah if you want to um sure you know like if you want to have a go um mechanics check computer use you know to make sure the software is clean mechanics to get the pieces back together and uh certainly i'll begin with the i'll begin with the computer check for making sure that each piece is okay what it's supposed to be and doing what it's supposed to do so while you are um, computing and rebooting and assembling, let's go out to the hallway and the mighty, mighty Acheron, Alkalon, Aquarius. What is the name of our ship? Archelon. 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 I had it before. Okay. The Archelon is sitting in an alley. Use computer 30. Yep. You're pretty sure that software is good to go. Rebooted, reformat. No problems there, uh, Dr. Leth. Haas, Merrick, what are you guys doing out in the hallway there? I'm going to go to the what's left of the Wookiee. Okay. Finally search it. Yep. No problem. He's over there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Just wander off. Why aren't there any bodies on this map? I, I don't understand what's going on. Very unprofessional. Um, sure. And Merrick? 
I'm assuming that when it came time to moving bodies, uh, mostly live or mostly dead, that uh, Dr. Askeleth required a little bit of uh, physical persuasion. I'm sorry, can I have that in English? <clears throat> he required me to lift and carry said body. Yes, and, and El Strapo into Mubo. the... Yeah. yeah, okay. And then uh, put the table, which was tossed, back upright mm -hmm. and kind of like sheepishly be apologetic about it oh you mean the, the big gurney that you threw across the room nice shot by yeah. the way yeah a destiny points worth of accuracy yeah yeah oh yeah i i remember well but uh, still apologetic about the fact because you know i realized i'm like i kind of messed some of these uh, room up no um shout out to new super fan um stuart mackey who is an editor of a podcast and, uh, you know, was um, giving some sound advice about our earlier episodes. And I assured him, no, no, we do use compression and normalization. Please keep listening. You know, the early stuff was our first stuff, you know, Xbox headsets and a snowball and, and a bunch of yelling into the microphone. But we, we've come a long, 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 long way since then. Um, and uh, Mr. Mackey is, you know, all caught up and was, you know, dying. Can't wait to see this stream. And, uh, you know, had noted some some things about our story, some of the deviants that we are some of the sort of extra that we had put in. Um, and I got to say one, one of the things that, uh, that people talk about is uh, Merrick's out of the box thinking, particularly in combat, even though you try to cram everything into a tactics role, you know, uh, and, and Sasha, you seem to be a very, very versatile character uh, for just a straight soldier. I have so, one knowledge check to work with. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear there's a bunch of whiny cavaliers and samurai that give me that, but I just, eh. it's you work with what you got. It's it's my fault because I continually choose characters that only have one knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this one you wield so well. So anyway, uh, are you going to behave yourself? Go back to bed, take doctor's orders, do something about your four out of 59 hit points? Or, I, or is it? Uh, I, said, I, I think that I would have taken the, uh, carried the uh, not yet dead opponent, put him on mm. the bed, maybe erect the bed, and then just kind of like just sort of sheer peer pressure from Doctor Left, just kind of like I set the table, maybe adjust it to the left, adjust it to the right. <laughs> he's just glaring at you while he's working on yeah. that floor. <laughs> and, and like it was like, Rrr, look up, Rrr, look up. Rrr. Okay, I'm gonna go now. And like I'll I'll grab my pants from a table and just kind of leave. Okay. I'm not, maybe, maybe there's a Wookiee that needs my attention. All right. the, the feeling of like observing someone uh, placing things in their exact positions definitely helped with my computer role there. So that was appreciated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I bet you Pop and Wood got a heart on it. It's like, just yes, that, that goes right there. You know, if this is anyone OCD, it's got to be Leth, right? Um, Kevin, the mechanics check, Dr. Leth. And then we'll talk to Haas about what he can scoof off the Wookiee before Merrick comes looking for some to make furry satyr pants out of the bottom half of this Wookiee and skin them or something. I, I, just to foob up the road. Oh my and God. Him. We've got, we've got uh, Zin's next ghillie suit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh, that's bad. That, that's, that's actually awesome. <laughs> Dude, but Either that or a really, really good disguise for Merrick. <laughs> <laughs> to ensure that I'm putting him pr back together properly, I'm going to be using uh, utilizing my racial ability of uh, inspiration. Sure, go right ahead. That is a 27 mechanics check. Yes, sir. Things are going back together nicely. Um, I mean, you, you, it's not like you had trouble taking them apart. And, you know, you're pretty sure you've got everything crossed all your I's and dotted all your T's, as it were. Oh, the troublesome part was catching him in the first place. Hmm. So meanwhile, uh, back out in the hallway, Haas. Yes. Searching the body. A stun baton, battle armor, 100 credits, mm -hmm. some various Wookiee smelly caked in the fur things he ate and personal belongings, and the classic um, Kashyyyk. What's the name of the home world from Wookiees? Kashyyyk. Kashyyyk? Yeah. Kashyyyk. 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 Bowcaster. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. And Nine. battle armor with, a th <laughs> with authentic battle damage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So I fast know. fast forward where we go to like the next Wookiee and he sees that he has like a Wookiee only weapon and you know Haas gets mauled because obviously you had to kill a Wookiee to take that. Right? But yes, I will grab Everybody. what I can. Can a normal sized oh. person use a bowcaster with proficiency uh, without special? I mean, you need the special training, but can they even use it? Uh, yeah, it's like a big rifle, like a big Sweet. gun. But I think it's an exotic weapon. You need the thing like a bastard to... sword. Give it to Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> not because he has melee exotic that doesn't transfer over but nice tra- yeah you're exotic no but guy. if he's gonna miss he might as well miss with something cool with style oh okay so you, ah. you instead of chopping <laughs> safely out of your way you want him shooting across the battlefield absolutely it sounds yeah. exciting okay <laughs> well um right now um <clears throat> since Haas is the guy here you know what do you pocket what do you make known what do you party up what do you want to do I will pocket the credits. Okay. Uh, Wise decision. Is there? Is <laughs> there a, you're, you're, right you're up hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the stun baton. Stun baton. I'll just leave on the ground for now. Okay. Uh, the bowcaster. You're interested in that, so you, you pick that up. Uh, kind of hard to uh, hide, but you know. yeah. The the bowcaster. I will. Yeah. You know, yep. it up between the party, and the armor is better than my fucking flight suit. Okay. Sorry effing flight suit <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's bad enough the dwarves get off collar but uh, i know kids watch this show kids that i know personally I know. love this show they watch it they're related be nice i've tried to say fukin that, say fukin not just just the last three hours of f this f that so it's oh kind of, not, not from you not from, <laughs> jesus messini you're contagious what did you guys like lick him up the side of the head during your break or something now they're all just going off i mean aiden and i can't help each other you know he gets going i get going Aren't, aren't you jealous aiden like aren't you and i the guys that swear in star wars these guys play nice now yeah. they're like yeah. approaching out of it's so true actually you know what like <laughs> honestly like that's i think that's the biggest surprise out of all of it is normally you are just so well mannered your characters are polite and precise or just too dumb to speak and <laughs> <laughs> you talking about gibson <laughs> no messina yeah. oh okay this dwarf is like this dwarf is like a chatterbox oh, potty wow, mouth little douchebag <laughs> look at me look at me what? look at me look at me it's a great character. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Smash him in the head every now and then. Like, uh, but I, oh. I just actually made the realization how much a change that is for you from the dichotomy switch. Yeah, huge uh, change. Okay. So, um, getting back to a half naked Wookiee that we all want to skin and make fur mitts and boots and gloves and hats out of. That <laughs> you wasn't my idea. Be warm. Just so you know. <laughs> Everyone's got a piece of this guy. That's terrible. Just take his paw, put it around a big gold chain on my neck. It's Wookiee. Who gets the Wookiee underwear that's like the waist to the hopper thigh? Oh, wait a minute. So does the ex-wife have like a Wookiee necklace? Or like, <laughs> like <laughs> life fur isn't caring. Oh, you mean like for one of Rahal's multiple ex-wives, you just send a fur coat? Don't ask yeah. questions. Yeah, like I still I has the bandolier with... bandolier on it. Hmm, this is unusual. <laughs> it's all clips <laughs> together. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. That's gnarly. Yeah, why is it moist inside? Don't ask questions. It's a fur coat. What do you want a fur coat? Pull okay. the pin and it'll be dry. Yeah. Oh, you guys want to um, hear a re- really bad joke? Oh, yes. Really, really bad no. joke. So I, yes. I tried some uh, Wookie over the weekend. Wookie meat. Gotta say, it was a little chewy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Not, oh, not, not. Bad today, joke was today you're right below me, bud. High five. All right. Um. <laughs> So today's our last live stream. We're going back to strictly <laughs> editing a podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us. And, you know, maybe we'll get around to like putting up something viable in a, in a couple of days, Joe. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say this guy has got any kind of ammo or ammo clips or eclips for a bowcaster. So we might want to look into what this thing runs off of. Um, but battle armor is not something you're going to like take and stash, obviously, in, you know, in the no. two minutes you have before Merrick comes prancing down the hallway, you know with no pants and measuring the wookie's legs so america oh, no america has <laughs> pants okay good i good i grabbed those okay but the record state okay thank god gm i know what the bowcaster runs off of yes please um so they're uh they use a quiver of 10 uh quarrels which goes for about 50 credits and weighs one kilogram um, okay so it's kind of like a rail gun um, mm-hmm. So, like, it, you know, it launches the quarrel at 
incredible speeds and explosive okay. energy. So, well, I'm gonna say this guy he did take a couple shots, you know, at you guys. There was there, there's got to be at least four shots expended. So mm -hmm. we'll say you oh. got a clip. You got a clip of five. Uh, but and he doesn't have like any backup clips. But I don't think like the way this is written, I don't think they thought to say that the guys got Eclipse. Like because the other pistol guys, anyone who says, "Oh, I have a pistol. I have this." Like I'm just looking at uh, let's say one of the um, assassins here. Right? It talks about his weapons. He's got a blaster pistol. Blah blah blah. And again, no ammo. So I'll roll a. He shot. D he shot me a few times. Yeah, I'll uh. Roll me a D4 here. Where's my dice? My new Star Wars dice. Because I, I was scared every time. I remember that. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Okay, so he's got two clips. Minus like the proverbial four or five shots. So you got a clip of 10, and then you've got like what's in the gun that's half burnt. Okay, so I'll say 15 shots total. More if someone can prove the last episode. He only took like two or three shots. Hmm. Okay, put that on your character sheet there, Haas. Uh, and along came Merrick. So... Merrick. Hmm. Body search underway. Some battle armor for a largish creature. Now, technically, a Wookiee yeah. is the only other creature off the top of my head in the Star Wars universe that fills one square, but gets to act like a large creature. <laughs> so if there was ever battle armor that was suited to size you, you're looking at it. But is it because we're I'm level four? Is it actually even better? Better than what? Being level four. It just says it's battle armor. So I'm well, assuming yeah. it's the generic core book battle armor. But uh, to my understanding. Yeah, it's it's, it's um about equivalent. Okay. And there's ways to make it better as well. Yeah, you can modify it, though. Mm -hmm. I just want you to get rid of the, the two baby carriage carrying front and back stormtroopers that are rotting in their armor uh. that you've had strapped to your ass since Felucia. That's what I'm <laughs> playing for. I've, had that, uh, I've never made point. I also have a droid arm, a, a droid <laughs> head. Yeah, that you've been like scratching and pointing and oh, I miss Rob. Um, <laughs> not Hammond, Wait, so but you know is... your buddy Rob, the guy with the finger puppet. You know. Yep. What's his is name? Is this like the the actual like Rob Peters medium yeah. armor? Yeah, was, he's talking about Peters, the sock puppet. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's like the actual medium armor, battle armor, like full thing. Like it just says grade. battle armor. It just says battle armor. Um, I would yeah, I, so I would like, also equate that as like winter battle armor. I think it's an armor of five, isn't it? Eight. Yeah, it's plus eight. Oh, plus eight. That's way better. Yeah, way so that's, better. That's a wear it, Ryan. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, we'll we'll look into this. The last time you guys were like, oh yeah, 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 it's this, and I looked up some later. <laughs> I was just like, no, 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 no. no. no my so, friend, so my friends are telling me, so it must be. Well, there's I'll battle armor, which is a medium armor, and then there's battle armor, comma heavy. Well, here, look at this. Yes. His defense is 21, and flat-footed, it's 20. Okay. So, Which yeah, is like I got 10? Armor. Which is like 10? So, a heavy battle armor is a plus 10 to your armor defense, or yep. your armor bonus. Yeah, that would be heavy. There you go. Yep. But, but he's got heavy, heavy battle, battle, armor. battle armor. Are so, you proficient in heavy armor? You're a soldier. You should be. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want it? Hey. You'll never well, get the Wookiee smell out. People are like, there's a Wookiee in here, and you're just like no, in the no, corner no. going, no, 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 I don't want to get that out because I'm like, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. Yeah, but now uh, Merrick's gonna smell bad uh, in on the inside, <laughs> is in like any enclosed room. No, okay, all right. So who's who's fiddling with the body at the moment? Uh Haas is so, like playing so around with the bowcaster in okay, here. All right, so paint me this image there. We have a we have Haas who's like yanking equipment off of the dead Wookiee. You got that it. is correct. So yep. I and I come prance I come like dancing around the corner, putting pants on. Yep. <laughs> and and then there's like that five seconds of silence where I'm still putting pants on. I look up, there's Aussie, he's pulling a bowcaster off a dead Wookiee, and we have that like two seconds like okay. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Haas, it's like He's looking at the size of the Wookiee and looking at the size of you and you're putting pants on. He's like, so, so you're like, 34? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just I, saying, this is one of the rare cases where you are about the size of a Wookiee. You are unknown region, custom race. So mm -hmm. this battle armor, I won't panel, you know. All right. You. I, I, I just won't play this like, because like, Merrick's very sensitive about his size. Oh, okay. Well, we won't tell Merrick. <laughs> 
just rips one of the carcasses off his chest. Here, you take this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, the body's gone, but they've like hosed off this armor and there's still fur stuck to the inside. <laughs> like, we all yeah, chipped in and got you battle armor, you know? Like, sure. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Look, look, it has active battle them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll push the button. <laughs> like all the, all the Wookiee screamers, right? It's, My ass, um, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so um let's assume that yeah. you're going to add battle armor to your character what's the armor called so i can dig it in heavy battle armor heavy battle armor yes okay. core rule book page 132 it, this stuff to buy costs 15 grand 15 large merrick 15 large yeah. you, this is your payment Don't my ask. friend just became an investment <laughs> <laughs> just to know you die i ain't going to collect um speaking of rahal and merrick that shouldn't really be talking at the moment but can right. be on their comms can we talk on the comms now no because you were jammed so let's go to nobody the... gives me the raspberry <laughs> meanwhile in the atrium poser is sure he saw the sith puppy but rahal will never know guys what are you guys doing it's dark it's quiet you know, no more birds we, calling. We was uh, sent to go find a terminal to uh, decrypt some encoded message or some encoded data. And uh, someone sent us here. But was this obviously a trap? I am wondering. Um, galactic lore. Galactic lore, you say? All right. Galactic lore of 21. Uh, Condor Man, kicking over a body, turns out to be an actual Nemoidian creature. Now, remember, this is a Nemoidian colony, and they've imported creatures native to Nemoidia, the planet, here. And Darga's got his hands on a couple of them, and they're Creehawks. They're like a savage people, you know, smart enough to think. But, you know, this is like a glorified birdhouse where he kept them. It's enclosed, it's domed, there's lots of room for them, but there's no way out save the door that you came in that got you locked in here. And these things are obviously very territorial and rangy, and someone slipped you in here and locked the door, so that kind of tells you it's a trap. But um, as far as, like, did the Cree Hawks trap you and go, okay, we really don't like this Rahal guy. Kaka at midnight, no. It, you know, no, these are, the, someone whoever, set you up in a dangerous situation. You know, it's like, dumping you in a rancor pit the rancor is like oh hi finally you've arrived right into my you know, no <laughs> yeah. all right so uh do they look edible uh you know on this planet everything tastes like chicken probably these things especially How, however eating a sentient creature is considered cannibalism even though it's may not they may not be human if these things are sentient it's considered interracial cannibalism. So, right. So, how I'm hungry just, are you? Not, I'm not hungry. I've been treated well by Dag. Dar Darga's food's pretty good. I mean, you know, but then again, those chicken legs he served earlier were pretty big. Just saying. So, I'm going to head back to the door, see what I can do to get it open. Okay. Can I have a used computer or mechanical check? I will. Uh, mechanical, I think, is probably if you're going to hotwire your door. I will. Uh, I'll use computer because okay. <laughs> I don't. I'm not trained in mechanics. Okay. What about you, Poser? What are you up to? Be kind of covering his back. Okay. Um. You know. Get, you Twenty-eight know, for use computer. Blaster still aimed where the Sith puppy was. Just. Okay. Not trusting this. Time. Time goes by, and he's he's poking around with his um. You know, trying to wire and stuff. Anyway, the um. The console is electrical, mechanical over sort of like softwareable, as it were. So use computer 28. You you get the door to um, unlock, as it were, but you don't get it to automatically open by itself. So now you're looking at a mechanics check or a strength check to force them open. Hey, uh, Poza, you want to come fiddle with this? I managed to shut off the locking mechanism, but uh, I can't get it to open. And then I'll turn and cover wherever he was because 
P.O. Oz obviously doing it for a reason. <laughs> yep. He's scanning the balcony. He's looking hard. He's using his conehead radar of the force to, you know, reveal creatures that in the night. Not that you know he's a force user. How long have you guys known each other? I mean, you got been through a lot. I mean, you like you left them for dead. You sacrificed each other for money. And you know, how you long had... has it been? Let's let's ask timeline. I mean, we've been playing this for like a Co- couple of weeks, honestly. Funny years? enough, like think about uh, it. Yeah. It's like it's only a couple of weeks. Like because you guys, even with the day four, day six hyperspace drive, you know, four two to four days on Felucia, one day, one or two days on the on the space station, a day at Alderaan. You oh, know, and then we've... Aquarius. Oh, let's say we've been to cruising yeah, like, around for about a month let's yeah say. like maybe even six weeks because then there's the um sometime later you know you finally get out to the nebulum b you know what i mean a good five six weeks yeah month and a half sure so he's not like my bestest friend in the whole well he's well yeah especially since you know earlier you were going to let him die due to you know cash flow exactly problems. <laughs> see it's it's all about perspective my friend i wasn't gonna let you die mm. i was going to let you Rely on your own skills to save yourself. Ah, yes. A growing moment, if you would. Yeah, I like that. That's good. I'm going to use that one. Mechanics check of 15, Jeff. Okay. Uh, You manage to get the door to to grind the gear to release, you know, to pop. It's stuck, but you guys can kind of like force open, squeeze through. Now you get the sucker to move. It's just like open. You said force open. So. Yeah, get it? Uh, meanwhile, Dr. Leth. Bibbidi boppity boop, I'm back online. Reformatted. Oh. I am an R4 unit. I am ready to serve, Master. I know fuck all. I've been taken back down to zero level. I'm totally reformatted. Lost all my XP. Are you my daddy? I do feel it is proper for me to note that this particular form of mechanics check, repairing a droid and constructing it, generally takes about an hour. Okay. I am almost online! Why can't I feel my legs? <laughs> you don't have them yet. Um, um, He is awake. It is conscious and he's beeping at you. But you are still... Yes putting servos and closing door you know what i mean but it's almost like the anesthesia wore off what are you doing doc oh uh-huh, look at that you know <laughs> hey i'm back brand new voice and everything wow so uh well are you my daddy oh no definitely not um hmm. i do believe well, I can comp- I can finish this particular install later. You don't need to be going anywhere. You just want to like leave him power down and wheel him around, push him around like he's a garbage can on wheels, so he can't run. <laughs> but I'm awake. I'm ready to help. Like get my arms moving here. How can I assist you, Master? Sure. Oh, I don't. Uh, basically, I was going to think along the lines of get basic motor functions down so he can look around. He's yeah. fine being uh, being conscious as he, as it were for a droid, mm. uh, but he definitely does not have many motor functions yet. Okay, well, I thought the idea to boot him up and put him together was to get him to aid you in all tasks. Mm. Or are you having second thoughts now? You're halfway through. No, I'm basically, it comes down to: is the ship moving? Or nope. Are, does it seem nope, like we're, we're parked somewhere? Anyway. Yeah, no, we're parked somewhere. Uh, okay, in that case, no, I would continue getting things to uh, getting things ready okay um let's say given us this hour you know you guys are playing around with the gear um mara cleans it puts it on you know haas um did you want to do a, a systems check on the ship or you guys want to wander around and search to make sure that there's no one hiding and it come out of a closet you know you guys even zin will help with that just to make sure that our hour is spent to like we are safe we are empty you know, before you guys might want to uh, call the boss or, you know, figure out what's happened to your other companions that might be in danger or <gasps> while looting the body and, you know, like, no, no, you take the arms. I just want a leg kind of thing. We actually remember that there might be two of our friends and I don't know, moral danger. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> right then. <laughs> moral, moral danger or mortal danger? Uh, Well, both. It's- moral. I was going to say either one applies. They are, sure. they are locked alone in a room for a while, you know. 
Um, Zin's having a nap. Haas and America looting. You're like, nah, they're big boys. You know, sure. So, gentlemen, back to Dargus Palace. Leaving the actual um, atrium and making your way back maybe to what? Your rooms? The audience chamber that's abandoned? You're just going to wander around? You guys are going to get the hell out of here? What are you going to do? But you guys have some possible personal belongings back here at the guest rooms. Yeah, I got to go get uh, my butler. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was his name? Um, God, it's been so long. What did I call him? Was it Alonzo? Sure. You're allowed to call him anything you want. Or Alphonse. Alphonse, that's what it was. Okay. You yes, find him wearing one of those like full um, night before Christmas, Christmas Carol, Ebenezer nightgowns <laughs> night with, the, with the little nightcap, right? And he's asleep and he's just like, eh, Fonz, kill me now. Eh, you know, just sleeping up, soaring away in his little room. I mean, you guys did kind of sneak off in the night. It's not like you're like, okay, Alphonse, if we're not back in 15, call the Marines. Like you, you know, you just snuck out with Poser. Your business is your own. I'll try comms again to yeah. see if I can get through to anyone. Well, now else. that you're at, you're away from the atrium and like back here, yes, yep. sweet. So, so Alpha Roger Niner, uh, how you guys doing over there? We was just uh, sent into an ambush here in the palace. Everything kosher out there on the ship? I yeah, found a new jacket to wear. It actually fits for once. This is amazing. Oh. Good for you, Merrick. I didn't know I authorized the shopping expedition, but uh, good for you. Yeah. Oh, there was no need for shopping. We were attacked, apparently. What? You guys too, eh? Yes, I need to speak to you about up upgrading our security. Yeah, I need to speak to you too. I'm just grabbing up a few things here. Did you guys leave anything back in the palace that uh, Poser and I can grab? Because... Uh, I don't think I want to stay here much longer. In, in person, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're confused that they are talking to each other, saying we should talk, they mean in person as opposed to with the comms. Just, you know, teehee clearing that up. Teehee. I'm just, <laughs> just the way you guys said it. It's like, if anyone's listening, they're like, but you're talking now. We should talk. Yes, we should talk now. You guys meet up? Yeah. Go, well, I'll ask if there's anything they need me to grab from the palace. Is there? Maybe one of those yummy turkey legs, Merrick? You know, they were delicious. Huge. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I already took one of the cameras. It was down. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep, so I'll the, take the that as a no. The very parts <laughs> he scrounged to make that trap door bomb at the door that those guys disarmed. Old camera parts from Dargat's Palace. You want good bombs, Merrick? Use good parts, not use salvage stuff. Anyway. Um, so you guys just try to like slip out yep. or do you guys just go to like the guards and go, you know, we're going back to our ship and see if they stop you or care. Actually, Those that's are... no, that's totally exactly what I would do. Go right to the guards. Would you inform Daga that, uh, I've returned to my ship to take care of some personal business. Uh, if he, uh, cares for my presence, he can send for me. I am okay. always available. They, um, in no uncertain terms, ask you to wait a minute and they run off and confirm that, you know, like everything is well, you know, Darga's asleep. You guys aren't like literally like had pulled some crap and the place is on fire or Darga's like bleeding out somewhere, you know, but it only take, they detain you for a few minutes and then they let you go. Sweet. Grab our ride. Uh, po other, do Poser, you that, were... that hmm? uh, car that we punked from Buddy? Or did they yeah, take several cars. <laughs> All the speeder I mean, bikes that you guys had and cobbled together, and then didn't you sell them off or recobble them or something? I oh. think uh, there was Kept something a few we of had, them. but then I remember you also at one point described how like the mechanics in Java in um, Darga's like par car park basically kind of like yeah, don't worry about it, we'll totally take care of that, and then just as soon as as soon as uh, Poser left, just tore it apart. Oh yeah, the the speeder, the land speeder. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's around, but they, you know, they're over there. 
yeah. a little over there. They're, they're but, either like into it and fixing it for you so much and so many pieces are out that's not running or, you know, or it's just kind of like finders keepers, you know. It's brand new, well, it brand new really land, land speeder. It all, wasn't really all ours to begin with. It was yeah. buddies who worked for Darga. Hmm. So, yeah, and they probably recognized it. Yeah, hey, it's Warwick's ride. Yeah, cool. Oh, he got killed. Must be ours now. Sweet. I, yeah. As we watch Aiden chew his microphone, I don't get it. But anyways, <laughs> are you sure you you're feeling okay, buddy? <laughs> That's the Anger. second time I've asked that question. What? No, I'm I'm good. I'm good. It, it's all been right. a long week. Aiden gets it. That's all that counts. Yes. Um, no, so actually Poser is going to walk Rahal out to, you know, the guards and whatnot, and then after that, you know, bid him a good night. Oh, you're and... staying? Yes, uh, I am, I feel I should stay here the night. I will see you in the morning. Are you sure, buddy? Uh, we didn't have exactly the warmest reception up in the atrium there. The, there are things that need to be handled. All right, suit yourself. We'll see you in the morning. Jump on a speeder bike. Rip back to the ship. Okay. Poser. Yes, GM. What do you want to do? Hunger down for the night? Explore? Hunt puppy? Listen well, for a distress signal on the frequency of your crazy, crazy little cone mind. What's uh, what's the plan here? Well, you, you kind of nailed it with that last one. As much as I would enjoy hunting down that Sith puppy, um, I, I think saving is probably a better use of my time. So, time to go cross-legged on the floor in a ping. Yes. So that- I'm going to go back to my room, retire there, force trance, you know, ping out see if i can locate her or that you know the help me ping and then from there i'll start to navigate towards it okay all right so use the force Uh, use the force of 19. You clear your mind. You reach out. You sense. You listen. You feel with the force. And yet, the for you to, to sense force users, you know, there's that um, sense all within radius, right? Yes. And they can, you know, the ones that are around can uh, counter ping, as it were. Yes. Well, we did a little ping before. So with your 19, you sense out the feelers. And at first you don't get anything. And time goes by. You lose yourself to time in your trance. Five minutes, five hours. You're not sure how long. You are so focused in your search and yet stealthily shields up, you know, do not want to like just broadcast your position to the universe or anyone in here. You are probing that silent dark pool, enclosed, underground, poking ripples, walking around the pool in the darkness to see what reflection, what person, what other force user you can find. And you'd all but given up. And then you just, your eyes flare open and you know this place has a basement and you should go there. You feel pulled to search the dungeon, to search below. 
you sense something under you somewhere in the complex okay so i will get up and start moving um by the way question how long actually was that trance like how many hours oh um because it's dependent for how many hit points they get back oh i see <laughs> <laughs> um well assuming the guys don't like suddenly revote to like come and scoop you up and disturb you you yeah. know we'll we'll say that um i'm assuming guys you think poser's a big boy and he's just gonna bed down for the night in the hour or two that's left of the night he's fine yep okay um we'll say you put in a good two hours oh yeah got it so that gives okay. me eight hp back four per level or four per hour okay And then, yeah, at that point, eyes open up, axes on the back, um, you know, get the blaster on the hip, and I'll start walking. Start searching for this basement. Okay. Can I have some stealth? Slip past some guards? They guard like a stairwell that obviously and ominously descends into a part of the complex and it's guarded. Uh, stealth of 21. All right. Stealth of 18. All right. Looking good. Looking good. Ooh. Uh, natural one for a four. Okay. So stop you there. Um, yep. Just zoom in here. I, uh, oh, I think I might have a... A slightly buggered map. There we go. That's a little better. Pull out on this. Um, kind of funny how this particular room looks like. It looks like a big happy face. Like you see in this smirk. It's a guard room that's smirking at you. Like I, I kid you <laughs> not. I kid you not. Like you guys see this? It's just like, hmm. That's interesting. I uh, don't see all. it. All I see is the atrium. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, I need to... Uh, need to recall um how do i hmm mm -hmm. i can split you guys up but you know what i honestly forget how to back together again yeah um anyway i can just move you guys over to what uh to what we're seeing here oh there you go yeah <laughs> it totally is working <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> it's been a while how long since poser's gone it alone and might need a little you know alone jedi time for the sake of Christmas. the story yeah it's been a little Christ bit now we're in oh. halloween oh yeah no they're right the, Chris the christmas that's our like that, that's our number one episode by the way the poser christmas special like has more plays than anything else we have <laughs> seriously um, hmm, you're not coming up there. We gotta find you. There we go. Poser Shan is the man. Put him on the map. There we go. All right. Let's uh, bump it up, bump it up. We're looking for sneaking away down into the dungeon and you come into the room here right. on the bot on the bottom here yeah and i think i need to size this we're having a little uh, let's just put you on the token layer there we go get back to the map layer and we're going to do a wonderful little thing of aligning you to a grid. And we're going to say, right, that's the three by three. But, uh, and there's our guy poser done and done. So poser, you see yourself on the bottom of this map, a rectangular room, um, goes four or five squares 
out of your 10 two foot square, 10 foot high hallway to each wall going left. On the left wall, almost halfway up are two doors. Center of the room is a guard station control panel. And then there are some mats and some uh, computers and some bric-a-brac, you know, like cover as it were. And on the back of the room are two more doors leading out. And the stairway you're coming down like is guarded, but it's not so far off from, you know, from the uh, the guest quarters right okay so you're sneaking and you're sneaking yes and then like a natural one there's that proverbial um you get to the bottom of stairs you're hugging a wall and you peek around the corner and um you know there's like a guard right there that just happens to like glance up at the doorway yeah Um, this, this large area has been cleared out of any furniture and other accoutrements and turned into a guard room. Cause remember this was once a palace, right? At right. one end, it's, there's a set of doors that appear to be sealed shut and large metal plates welded over them. At the other end, heavy blast doors block off what appears to be stairs leading down to the next floor. Another door sits in one of the side walls. So you're coming through one of those three. Uh, there are three Gamorian guards and um, one of them kind of sees you and is just kind of like, you know, peering in the night kind of thing. They have torch scones lighting up, you know, so it's like a shadowy dungeon as opposed to like LED lighting down here. Right. What do you do? Okay. Before we go to initiative, there's that proverbial, you come down, you blow a stealth roll really bad, and Buddy sees you and just kind of looking at you. You have that something you could possibly do before yes. this goes, you know. Um. So I will use Jedi Mind Trick. Okay. Um. And so I can, if I beat equal or exceed their will defense with a use of force check, let's make that first. Anything else? Okay, I got a 26. Yes. Okay. And it so, exceeds um, it by a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, the amount that I exceed, it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Um, but I can, I'm going to create a fleeting hallucination that distracts the target and enables me to use a stealth skill, even if the target is aware of me. Okay. So he sees you and then it's just like, oh. What's that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. The the Miss Piggy illusion. <laughs> you boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stealth of eleven. <laughs> Stealth of eleven. Look, it's untrained. I have a plus three in it. I had to roll so my perception of three. Oh man, you were so lucky. That hologram of Miss Piggy is looking really tasty in the back of my subconscious. Okay. <laughs> So he looks away and looks back and you're like, you do the, the shadow fade, right? Yeah. And he's just peering going, you know, did I see something? You know, remember the old thief game? And you could like get exposed to the garden. As long as you back off, maybe you're like, huh, what? Oh, oh. Is that somebody yeah. there, you know? And they, you know, they kind of get up and wander a little bit towards you, but he takes a torch off the desk and, you know, lights up the bottom of the stairway where you will, were, and you're doing the back fade. And like, hmm. yeah, just keep, just keep backing up. Okay. So anyway, they stand there, you know, out in the open looking at the stairwell, this one guy for a long time. Cause again, he's got nothing better to do. You know, these right. guys are just guarding down here and he just kind of, now he's up and look at the stairwell. He just decides to, you know, have a stretch and, you know, have a little wander around. Do, 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 you know. For those thief fans out there love that game all of them hmm. anyway what do you do now sir um very narrow escape of a solo fight are you ready yes <laughs> are you ready ye of the not un unlit unbuilt lightsaber no yes yeah I i'm ready for the fight jeff okay 
So I will I'll pull an old move out of the hat. Um, so as uh, when he gets within 12 squares of me, um, I'm going to use Mind Shard on him. Okay. Let's have it. Yep. Use the Force check. He's always the first thing. Oh, no. That's a 19 for 33. Okay. okay. So I'm assuming I beat his will defense. I will defense is like 10. Okay. Yeah. So he takes 5d8. Okay. What? Love the evil smile on his face when he does his force abilities. He's like, <laughs> he's been waiting lots of episodes. I know you guys. Oh, I know. And now he's a little. Getting, now he can go force wild because he's got no witnesses, or at least he's yeah, going to leave. Yeah. So no we're, we're, we're going to give Aiden his alone time to stretch his force wings if you guys don't mind and see how Do this, it. How I want to see now. this. This is yeah. going to be a massacre. I mean, uh, he's going to use the Force in, in the only way a former Jedi can. No, mm -hmm. The best part I love it is he's, he's going to come back to the rest of the group. Be like, yeah, that's what happened. All right. So I'm also going to use a Force Point to increase the damage by 2d8. Okay. That would be good because you didn't kill me. <laughs> yep. That's a, yep. Well, it, it's just to indicate that I rolled it. Um, and all right. The end extra okay another six damage for 28 total damage okay so his mind explodes and he starts bleeding and he just sharply looks in your direction and he's mad and his eyes are bulging and you just juice it with your force point and it just his eyes roll back in his head and he just and drops to his knees he also drops uh one down the condition track if he isn't dead Oh, sorry. And then to the floor. He took. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which means he drops five down the condition track. Okay. Uh, See what you did there. <laughs> ah. um, the other, you know, the other guard gets up and is confused, you know, grabs a scone and comes over to him. And it's like, you know, like, what's you sick? What the hell, man? He's looking all around for an intruder or, you know, there was no blaster fire. There was no dart. <laughs> in the neck, you know, yeah. but he just kind of like went down, but, you know, glared at the doorway and then just, uh, pfft, you know, kicks over. So anyway, the, the piggy comes over, starts poking at the body and, uh, you know, sees it's his condition and, you know, pulls a weapon and looks towards the door. What do you do? Um, and start calls to his buddy, right? You know, what's going on? Well, so know. right before he calls to his buddy for scrap. Okay. So. Um, calling for free. Uh, movement within 30 is good and having a look for a perception. So I think I'm all good. Anyway, whee, and, hey, and that force grip 30 close, but yeah, beats my will of 10. Uh, oh, no, it's a fortitude, isn't it? Um, yes, fortitude. And you, you, well, you've beat it by a lot. Yeah, <laughs> the, the force is um, strong with this one. And since I beat DC twenty five, target takes six D six damage. Okay, go ahead. Um, I am also going to juice this one. <laughs> he is really pissed. You left him to die in that gladiator pit, man. I'm <laughs> just taking it out on the on the guards in the basement. Uh, 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 all right, twenty one uh, points of damage. Okay. And um, and they can only take a single swift action next turn. Um, and I can maintain it on, or I can maintain my concentration on target creature to continue damage from round to round. Okay. Um, standard action, I have to make a new use of force check. Okay. So he grabs his neck and just start like trying to make piggy noises and nothing really is coming out. And he's... He takes a knee, you know, almost yeah. as if there were an arrow in it, and he's got his elbow on the other knee, and he's just, you know, choking and, uh, you know, suffering said damage, but he doesn't go down. Back to our turn, okay? Um, other guard, you know, makes a perception. What's, what are you two on about? 19 plus, okay, decides that something isn't right and comes over. One, two, three, four, five, six you know, what's going on, and just takes in the scene confused. Okay. 
your turn. Okay. Uh, and you use the force check to maintain. I'm just lining them up here. Yeah. But in all real, in all reality, this is exactly what would happen. I mean, in all Star Wars reality, Jedi would walk downstairs, even a Padawan, the three Gamoran warriors, to be like, dip, dip, dip. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. So, uh, use the force check of twenty one. Does that beat their fortitude defense? Yes. Okay. All right. Then they take four d six, or it takes four d six points of damage. This is the guy that you were already choking. Yes, dude, I'm continuing to choke. He takes another 17. Okay, yeah. Uh, and he just keels over in front of the other guy. Does anyone speak Gamorian? Because this guy's like, damn, I am so glad I did not have the Kreehawk chicken. Look at these guys. It's, this is like the worst freaking food poisoning I've ever seen. Bob, Sadly Doug, enough. you okay, buddy? Poke, poke, you know. Uh, something ain't right here. I'm going to use my intelligent picky brain. To deduce that we're under some sort of attack or something's going on. Anyway, I draw my weapon and just afraid that there's some kind of like he starts sniffing the air and backing up. He takes cover behind the console here and he's just looking all around. He's sniffing the air like, is there a gas? Like he's looking at the vents. Like he's just trying to figure out. So he goes to cover, center of the room, pulls weapon and, you know, doesn't. Um, sorry, uh, your stealth was 11. Yes. It doesn't see. These guys are horrible. <laughs> I make a perception check only after I'm standing over you. It's so much. What's wrong, Bob? You know, but you, no, you're good. You're, 11 makes you completely invisible. You're so lucky. <laughs> I'm rolling crap and he's rolling hot. Welcome to the Gamor Gamorian blender. All right. So, your turn. What do you do? God, we okay. got to figure out a way to get you unleashed. <laughs> no, nope, I am not. I am not using the Force Unleashed book. That is broken as hell. Jeff, nope, you've sorry. already opened it up to me. No, nope. oh, oh, sorry. Because you know Goku Ball. Remember the uh, the shaman? Yeah. But no, we we've already discussed this. Um, well, okay. Well, you know, I I don't screw you. You know, players might just step thick, and we'll see what happens as this plays out. Yeah. No, I completely agree, Jeff. I completely agree. Um. So I'm going to spend another force point as a reaction and regain uh, force grip. Okay. And use again. How many points have you got left? Um, I had six. Ap after this, I'm going to have two. Okay. Because these like these regenerate a level, not daily. I'm aware, Jeff. Okay. This, is, this seems like a pretty good time to use yeah. them, though. And all. Yeah, like, oh. I've been I've been poking Aiden to use force like force points for like an entire yeah, why, season. Why do you think he, he just unloads in one room. It's like, are you sure you're down to two? I'm just getting goosebumps. All right. <laughs> yeah, force point. You were gonna like send him off on his own, so that's. Fair. I didn't send him off. He like, oh, I'm sorry, Rahal. I have to stay here and and want split the party. Okay. Okay. Uh, use the force of nineteen. Okay. Yep. Okay. Beats fortitude. So beats my four two to fourteen. Yeah. Yep. Beat due to beating also DC fifteen check. I only do two D six points of damage. Okay. Wasn't that six thirty roll? Nice job on that damage roll though. You are on fire 10. tonight, Aiden. And what else do you do? Um, <laughs> well, it's it's a standard action for that. I already took a reaction. I can't really do okay. anything else um yeah, but i'm gonna he, keep a choking him yeah, yeah. I've, I've, i'm going to keep force grip on him okay and... he doesn't he doesn't call out but you ever get the old chicken bone stuck and yeah. you have that reflexive like you start stamping on the ground okay he starts yeah. choking and he's like ah, 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 and he starts tapping his axe on the ground like tick, 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 like ah, ah. it's more of a reaction i'm choking but he does make noise you know king 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 you know that kind of thing Okay. Uh, but I am confused. I'm choking. Uh, I don't know where the source is, so I'm making perception. Another natural one. Jeez, man. Don't can't figure it out what's going on. It's your turn. All right. Uh, and you use the force check to maintain. Okay. Eighteen. Love that juice stat. This is and... why Saga is broken, right here. This is the exact <laughs> reason, right here, why, why we'll, they, we'll people see. say we'll it's see. a broken system. We'll see. What do you got? Okay, uh, six more points of damage. Uh huh. 
and it's still he can only take a swift action. Okay. Next round, so he's um he drops the 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 his axe, you know, he's really yeah. choking up double hand, he drops his axe and it clatters loudly to the floor. I get what I can out of this. Um <laughs> and, it, and it's your go. <laughs> All right, new check. He's been waiting so long for this, ladies. And I know, I know. Like, give it to him. You got to give it 30. to him. Another thirty. All right, which means he takes sixty-six. Oh God, that's Boy. beautiful. <laughs> I'm not even paying playing battle music because this is just wholesale slaughter. This isn't a battle. This is, this is this is knife in the dark. You know, this is the, this is why they yeah. restrict Jedi's in this campaign because yes. if you made a party of Jedi's, you would walk through every single encounter like, oh, I want it to go this way. This, mm. this is Anakin at the Jedi Council. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. In my opinion. How many dark side points? Uh, call in and vote on our Twitter now. How many dark side points should I give up where he just comes down the stairs and like people just doing their job, being guard like? Does he slip past them? No. Death. Death. Exploding brains. Choking. Hmm. But okay. It yeah. Does not have evil <laughs> Thr- it does not have an evil descriptor, Jeff. No, okay. it doesn't. Force it choke doesn't. Is, is not evil. But you exactly. are assassinated. You are you, you are you are it. hiding in the shadows and using the force to assassinate guards. It's semantics. It's, it's semantics, guards, man. He is in the middle of a rescue mission. Exactly. Yeah, but in all, in all, it does also say anytime that you choose to take the easy route instead of first trying the hard route, it's yeah. I tried the hard possibly route. getting what what is he what is he rescuing? A gut feeling? Somebody's there calling is literally for help. someone screaming. Or well, not screaming, but you know, pushing oh, yeah, constantly. Yeah. Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! I don't know, man. This seems pretty dark. Like I said, if you walked in the room and they and you stood your ground and you like try to confront them and talk them down or let me pass or bullshit your way, and they pull, okay. they, you know, pull arms. That's one thing. But you snuck down, almost got caught, and you had that chance to back off. And what did you do? You start sniping from the shadows, man. That, that is, is dark that is force okay. use shit, dude. No, th- <laughs> okay. There's a reasoning behind it. I would have stood my ground at first. But back in the arena, I tried to take on two of these guys, and I got dropped and almost killed. Yeah, they, they was, I'm it, not they taking slaughtered a the chance. party. Yeah. And, and what just happened to you? I almost got ambushed again. Uh, yeah. And how does that make you feel? Angry. It makes me annoyed. Afra- afraid? Afraid? <laughs> Angry? <laughs> Do you hate Gamorians? You see where we're going with this dude? <laughs> anyway, uh, shall we continue with the battle? And I will withhold my judgment to the end. Good. Um, <laughs> 16 points of damage. I, I'm going to use a GM force point to pretend I didn't deflect that. <laughs> Good. I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm all sorry, go, go. Get them all riled up. Well, it doesn't help the whole crew's jumping in there going, yes, yeah, give it to like, him. No, he's fine. Yeah. You sons of guns. Let um, him murder. So it, was 16, <laughs> it was 16 points of damage. Yes, give in to your anger. Give in yeah. to your hate. <laughs> yeah, there's hate there's Palpatine right. down here in the shower going, oh, you finally got found me. This is, oh, it's so embarrassing. Okay, down he goes. Cough, cough, hack, hack. Uh, let's pull out some little markers, shall we? I don't think I'm doing so well. You know, I really don't think I'm doing so well. Now, um, you know, as per rules, they drop to zero and they, they can, you know, recover, right? Yeah. Even if I go negative, once they hit zero and we're way down the track, you can administer first aid. Yes. Right? You can't like there is there is some saving grace. You haven't slain them out way, right? You're dropping these guys. Yes. You're hospitalizing them. Yeah. So depending on what you do after they're down, that's a saving grace as a GM, explaining the how I see the rules to you. This could be a way out of your dark side point. But if these guys, you know, bleed out or, you know, like I said, there's I mean, even inaction. I will do nothing and let them bleed out. Or I didn't get them into time. That's straight up core book of Dark Side Point. Yes. And the Rebellion era, I'm supposed to be even harder on you than regular Star Wars. There's also, though, like 16 over his th- is over damage threshold because that would kill him outright. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just talking about the first guy. <laughs> the second guy it's like i'm at negative seven or nine and this last guy had 11 points and you did like 16 and i have 27 total so it's like my threshold is 19 i've been waiting for something big 
And well, okay. It, the, if the, his threshold is 19, I don't surpass his threshold. You have it. doesn't it. outright kill him. You, you have yeah. it. You have it. Yeah, and we're, he, did, we're he, close. he has released the choke on the ones who have dropped. I mean, he could have just been like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Like, we're, we're, we're treading the gray, and you guys are getting all riled up. I'm just saying. We are getting to some gray, dark stuff here. Your intent is there. But we'll see how this plays out. So, on the last guy, um, you know, you drop him. Okay. What do you yes. do next? So, I will go over to each individual one and... Okay, um, so as soon as that guy is down, you're telling me on your turn because I'm still have combat running because sec seconds are precious here. You yes. immediately move to the first guy. Yes, I will move to the first guy. Okay, stepping out from behind cover at the back where the sealed doors are, you see a hulking. I mean, this hulking Gamorian is more than a head taller than most others of his species. With the heft and bulk that makes him seem nearly twice as wide as well. The brutish warrior clutches an oversized mace in his hands and wears other, where, whereas other Gamorians seem fat and sluggish, this guy makes out like he's pure Merrick muscle. And he comes around the corner and comes upon the scene of three fallen guards and you standing over one. And we'll see you next time oh. on Star Wars. Oh. We shot first. Sorry, dark, dark side point pending. Welcome to, that, that should be, yeah, hmm. You know what? I think we'll do a spinoff show. You know, we're, we're, there's been complaints about you guys about like having too many characters and too many people. We're, we'll 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 split the show. We'll bring in Rob and Haas. We'll split the show off two shows and we'll, we'll call the spinoff show Dark Side Pending. What do you say? Uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Well, we'll see you next time on Dice Before Dishonor. No, no, no. Mummy's Matt. No, no, no. Oh, we shot. Well, actually, we choked first. That's what we're calling tonight. Actually, no. Mine sharded first. That's true. Mine sharded first. Good night, everybody. <laughs> and may the force be with you because it's sharing with these guys. He said <laughs> sharded. Stay back. You. Gas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't seem to be as susceptible as you Gamorians. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad idea. So. I am an adept negotiator, after all. Uh huh. The and then if you get him on your side, he'll open the big door. Quick, yeah. get us in there. It'll be safe. Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing is I can't take on more than one target at a time with adept negotiator. I can talk someone down, but I can't talk down three guys. Hmm. Nope. Okay. Um, so. Rob's moving. We haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. We're going to pick up Starfinder. That's going to be his game on Sunday night. Right now we're doing uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition and a little thing show called, we called Simply 2nd Edition, where Jarrett Mercer is running a homebrew world and giving us a little one shot. So I've moved Cheryl, where we're heavy, from the Friday game to the Sunday game. So myself, I get to play. Cheryl gets to play. Joe is playing with us. Jared that's good that's Court, actually you know? probably a way better way to get her into the podcasting too is have her play with, with you with the new well also she's playing with Corey and Jer they're all brand new like you guys have been working with me for two years you have a chemistry built in and you have experience where Corey's brand new Joe's still relatively new Jared's still relative you know what I mean so she's with a with a let's all learn together kind of you know that kind of thing